Hi, I thought I'd do a little video instead of sort of just some text and uh, a few pickies on my website. I thought, you know what, I'm going to do this video because I'm going to fanboy a little bit about this. I want to talk about Heart of Neon. I want to talk about Jeff Minter. Heart of Neon is a video game documentary about one of the most original game designers ever. He's been putting games out since early 80s. He's written a ton of stuff. His games are amazing, immersive, frantic, just tripped out and they're just great. I just really love them. Jeff Minter, Llamasoft, amazing games. So the documentary is all about that. I'm actually writing music for that documentary, which it's great because it's being created by talented filmmaker Paul Doherty. There's, it's actually a, a documentary in progress. So there's clips out there already. If you go, if you look further down the Heart of Neon uh, website, go over there. He's got a Patreon page going. He's putting clips out there. My music's on a lot of those clips. So you can watch, you can listen, you can just see what it's all about. So not only is it great to be involved in that documentary? The documentary itself is about Jeff Minter, Llamasoft, games designer. I am a big, massive fan of Jeff and his games, and I followed him from the very beginning. So I just wanted to do this video and really fanboy, because not only am I working on a great documentary, I'm working on a great documentary whose subject matter is something personal to me so it's doubly amazing and it's coming together really well show a bit of support just get on over to the, the, their website throw a bit of coin at the patreon page just let's let's get this done and finished there's some amazing interviews he's done already paul's even like doing interviews now while the pandemic's on of other people he's done some great interviews there's i mean he's actually visited jeff in, in his uh, on his farm in 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 Wales with all the sheep and his llama and his donkey and stuff like that. That's the other thing I want to say about Jeff. It's so random. He just wants to live on a farm with these sheep and a llama and a donkey and stuff like that. There's a lot of these creatures in his video games, and they tend to sort of spit lasers and you you know they're the baddies and ah oh, honestly original mad great. I want to visit his farm. I, I don't live that far away, so hopefully after the pandemic, I'm gonna I'm gonna swing it. I want to swing it with Paul to get me to go round and meet Jeff and, and and his programming partner Ivan and just hang out and play video games and stuff like that. Anyway, Paul's been there. He's he's videoed all this original footage of, of Jeff, Ivan, and everyone there. It's only two. I don't know why I said everyone. I mean, all the video games there, all his hardware, all his amazing stuff all this sheep his llama his donkey uh, that's the other thing jeff does he does um daily uh, sheep time on twitter where he goes up to the field and sees all the all the animals and he basically streams live from there so it's well well worth following him uh, anyway i digress so i just wanted to talk about some of jeff's games i was there from the beginning i'm a big massive atari geek so my very first computer atari 400 absolutely love that computer and coming up to probably I don't know I should have really come along with dates shouldn't I probably mid mid 80s I discovered Jeff Minter and I was part of one of these um, you'll probably remember these, these postal services where you could rent video games and it comes through the post and one of the I wanted to play everything basically on my Atari 400 everything I could get my hands on I wanted to play because I loved video games I loved that computer and then one day from this postal service Grid Runner. Oh, what's this? Llama Soft. Yeah, vaguely, vaguely rings a bell. Probably seen it in Atari magazines. Put it in. Probably 15 minutes to load up. It was on tape. And then um, started playing it. And it just stood out. Playability from so many of the other games that were on the market at the time. It was just full on blaster. So frantic. So much going on. And it was one of those games. And these are few and far between where, you know, it's difficult to play, you, you get killed and you're like, just one more go, just one more go. And I got hooked on Grid Runner. So I wanted to know what else was out there. And second Llama Soft game, I still have. Yes, it's Attack of the Mutant Camels. Check out that cover. Check out the artwork by Steiner Lund. How cool. Look, a laser spitting camel, I told you. And there's the, uh, there's the video game. 
basket. So I thought, yeah, oh, check this out. Check, 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 check. Oh, this is so awesome. What have we here? We have cassette tape and the actual, so these are the, oh, honestly, these are the instructions. Look, 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 look. Look at the 80s DTP in. Amazing, amazing. Oh, here's all the instructions. It goes on the back. Keeps going, keeps going. Look, Jeff Minter signature, Llama Soft. So uh, this is my second, my second game, and I was just like, I just wanted to play everything. And unfortunately, I mean, Jeff went off. I mean, he, he was writing on all of the computers as well: Spectrum, Commodore six, well, Vic twenty, six, Commodore sixty four, and you know, some of my friends who had those those computers, they had some of Jeff's games. I'd go around there and play, and it was amazing. And, and now with emulators, I can play everything which is great so i just wanted more stuff more stuff and then i discovered light synth he's created something called a light synth what is this i read it in i can't even remember what i don't think it was atari user it might be page six magazine I, I can't remember what magazine but i remember reading color space jeff minter's light synthesizer I was like, what is this it's an instrument that you play and it to, to, to give an idea what it is, it's um, imagine the light show of a Pink Floyd concert. You know, it's that. You're creating this amazing light show on your computer. In fact, hold on, talking about Pink Floyd, I want to say big thanks to Jeff for opening my eyes and ears, mind, whatever, to Pink Floyd back then in, in the 80s. He, he, he raved about the sort of dark side of the moon. I was like, what is this and it, later on I managed to get you know a copy my own vinyl fold out copy and listen to it and I was like wow and it was it kind of blew my mind in a way that it took me a little while to get to get into that and then I was totally into it and then I just totally loved it and so yeah thanks for getting me into Floyd wicked anyway color space color this this is uh, this is the Atari ST version but this is on the Atari 8 bits as well and then it's a yeah light synthesizer check this out on the back check this out so you can see there's a little uh nod there it checks the guys to the galaxy babel fish so this i remember getting this okay this is the st version as i say but i remember getting this on the atari 8-bit computer and it completely blew me away because it just created all these amazing patterns and you know you can just put music on in the background and, and basically visually jammed to it which was so original and so good and so fun and i was actually lucky enough round about the time it came out on the atari 8-bit computers and um, I, I was lucky enough to go start going to some atari computer shows in london they had these massive computer shows and everyone all the exhibitors were there so all the software companies were there i remember meeting loads of like really cool people and buying loads of games there you just had access to everything and the very first one i went to jeff minter was there alarm soft massive stand airbrushed uh, atari um was it an atari you know what it was an atari 800 totally airbrushed by stein alone totally trippy it was amazing big screen as well projected on color space there pink floyd playing him controlling it all keyboard and joystick and i was i just i was blown away and then the second show we went to the atari st was actually out and color space had come out in the atari st so it was he was there again even bigger even better sort of color space on the 16-bit machines and it was it just totally blew my mind i was like what it did this is so original and it, it i'm amazed that being a musician and composer and I've got so much music out there I haven't actually created a music video with Color Space or one of his future um, let's not ramble he basically come out with Tripatron after Color Space and this was like a more advanced one for the I think it was it did come out for the Amiga as well but this is actually the uh, Atari ST uh, version and check out the manual it had its own programming language you could do so much with it just videos all over the place I just realized there's a, there's a poster a Tripatron poster that I should get that frame shouldn't I I really want that frame Look. check 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 it out so yeah I, I must do a music video with this but I ended up getting Tripatron 
as well, which is just a more advanced uh, light synth. He, Jeff went on basically to make um, the, there's a light synth built into the, I think it's the Xbox 360 um, as well and, and, and various other consoles and it was great. Anyway, I saw him on a later Atari show um, and he had the Atari ST. The Atari ST again was airbrushed by Stein and Lund. I remember seeing it. I I, every time I, I went, I spoke to Jeff and I was just fascinated with him. He was just this like long haired, bearded guy who just did, he basically did what he wanted to do as in what games he wanted to make. He didn't kind of commercially sell out. And, okay, you know, he, he, he just, did what he felt he wanted to do and he, in, in the process of that he just created these amazing games some two other games i've got here so i've got originals on i can you see them on the atari st these are amazing this is so good andy's attack that is such a great blaster use the mouse on that one and grid runner in fact i think that's mouse oh that's mouse as well yeah it is both of these are, so you, you you're playing these on the the 16 bit computers the atari sts uh, or the amigas and they it's it's just like full-on frantic blasting better sound better graphics and 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 just just great and then the next thing because i'm such a big atari geek the next thing what comes out next okay atari Lynx. he didn't do anything on the links did that that would have been really cool yeah i was just thinking about it the next thing for me and jeff minter game was in fact the Atari Jaguar. I actually bought my Atari Jaguar. Jaguar? Jaguar. Jaguar. You, you watch these videos, you realise I just can't pronounce any of them. The, uh, the Atari Jag, we'll call it the Atari Jag, actually bought it with this game bundled with it, along with Cybermorph and I think Alien vs Predator, which is another cool game, but but this game, Tempest 2000, it's just, it's honestly, uh, I, have, I can't even count the hours I've actually played this game. I've still, I'm in the music studio now. I've actually got an Atari Jag set up down the, that end down there where the TV is. I've got quite a few different consoles there, but this is a game that comes out a lot. I do still play it. And then probably, I don't know, a year later, Defender 2000, which is another, another, another cracking one, which is, which is great. So I kind of followed him all, <clears throat> all through. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting so emotional. Up. <clears throat> all through the Atari, the Atari computers and consoles. So next up for me, and the games of Jeff Minter were PC games. So in 2008, he released Space Giraffe, and 2009, Grid Runner Revolution. Both amazing tripped out shoot 'em ups. So good still available on Steam, so just get over there, download them, and just have a, 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 an amazing blast. I've actually got them installed on my music laptop, which I take out when I'm on the road, and I should be writing music, and I get distracted by these games a lot, so I, I don't know why they're on there. They're just, they just distract me, because that's what I play them all the time. They're complete, they're, they're amazing, they're amazing. Then after that, in fact, I'm just looking at the dates now, because there's so many of them. 2011 onwards, Jeff released a whole load of iOS games on the Apple Store and I just grabbed them all and I'm just looking down at Minotaur Rescue, Minotron, Goat Up, Grid Runner, Five a Day, Super Ox Wars and there were all these amazing retro games for example Minotaur Rescue was was done in the, the graphic style of the Atari VCS, uh, Minotron uh, 20, 2112, is that what it's called? Minotron 2112, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at Wikipedia. Minotron basically was like the uh, Mattel in television as well, like those type of graphics. And, and there was um, the Spectrum, Goat Up was in Spectrum type graphics and they, they were amazing. They were, they were on the Apple Store, they're not there anymore. I was completely gutted because I upgraded my iPad and I transferred all the apps and all the data across and it turns out it basically said oh, these these apps are no longer available on the I, I the Apple iTunes I don't even know what it's called the Apple store uh, and you can't have them on your new iPad so I was I kind of lost them and I was really sad but after that it gets better the story gets better after that 
PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC as well. I'm checking the dates now. Uh, 2016 onwards, he released Polybius, he released Tempest 4000, he released Minotaur Arcade, which is Grid Runner and Goat Up. And I'm just waiting. Moose Life is actually out on the PC, which looks so good, but I'm waiting for the PS4 version. So I don't know when that's out. Jeff, when is Moose Life on the PS4 out? I can't even find it on the internet. There's no release date. Um, but Polybius, Tempest 2000, Minotaur Arcade on the PS4. I play them on such a regular basis. They're just amazing, amazing games. Minotaur Arcade, Grid Runner. It's just absolutely mental, full on the amount of stuff on screen. Tempest 4000 is such an amazing follow up to Tempest 2000 on the Jack. I actually thought there's no way you're gonna top this Tempest game. Tempest 2000 is quality up there, playability through the roof. Tempest 4000, PS4, it, honestly, it's even better. I, I don't know how he did it. It's just so good and Polybius Polybius is such an amazing blaster completely completely crazy tripped out but one of the one of the things I want to say with all Jeff's games this is why he's such an amazing he's an independent independent game designer always did his own thing that's what that's that's one of the things I respect him for, and he has kind of influenced me and my music and what I write and how I write, because first and foremost, Jeff is doing what he wants to do. He's doing it from the heart. It's a game he wants to play. He's not kind of, you know, selling out and just doing it for the cash or, He's 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 doing it because he wants to do it, and I I, I kind of all my music I've written I've kind of followed you know a, a similar path to Jeff, and and I've just done what I kind of wanna hear as opposed to you know writing in the style of someone else because they make money. I am gonna write in my own style. I'm going to do that. I'm basically going to do what I want to do. It sounds cocky, but I don't mean it like that. It's it's following your heart and being true to yourself. So that's, that's you know, firstly, you know, that's that. that it, it really struck me early on that Jeff was doing something he really wanted to do. And then the other thing that struck me, and I mean, all this is still true today, as it was when he started out, his games, he wanted you, the player, to become a part of these games. And as technology has advanced, I feel you are becoming more and more at one with these games to the point where you are enjoying them and it gets to a point the controls and sorry, Joystick, the controls. <laughs> you know, a, a, a near enough subconscious. You, you don't have to consciously think, you just completely sort of, it's like a direct mental link to the actual game. And, and that is so true with Polybius, that game. There is so much going on. It's a crazy amount of stuff going on, but you kind of play it and you kind of feel like you're part of the game. I, I, you know what, I play these new games now on surround sound in a darkened room and they are so good and you feel like you are at one with a game. You and the game are basically, yeah. I can't even describe it, it's so good. You, you, you know that, that kind of thing where you're like in the zone? It's that all the time from Jeff's games and just plays games. The guy is a genius and he's just written so much good stuff. It's it's untrue. And it's it's real anyway, I'm kind of I'm kind of fanboying too much. Let me just say 
check the link, get to Heart of Neon, show your support for this indie documentary, uh, help the documentary out, help my music, go and check out the clips and just support this amazing project. This is a story that needs to be told. It's long overdue, but it's a perfect time for it to be told now because Jeff has got such a massive catalogue of amazing games. It's just great. Anyway, I'm gonna stop right now. Sure, just get on over there. Just watch, well, just go, go and watch the clips. I feel like I'm going around in circles now. I'm just gonna completely, I'm gonna break down crying in a minute. Aren't I? <laughs> anyway, I'm proud to be part of the documentary and it's about someone I really do respect a lot who I've grown up playing his games and I'm still playing his games I mean can you believe that one probably the first time maybe I played I don't know one of his games 1984 and now it's 2021 that sounds crazy doesn't it and I've been playing and enjoying all his games and one of the things I want to do now because of emulators it's kind of like a new year's resolution because I'm working on this documentary and I'm writing all this music I'm thinking I really do need to spend a lot more time with emulators and go back and really, really play those games that I haven't played a lot, like the VIC-20 games, Commodore 64 games, the Spectrum games, play all them on emulators, you know, there's, I feel like there's a chunk of Jeff's games catalogue that I'm kind of missing out, you know, I've really, I've really played all the Atari games so much. I really enjoyed them, but I feel like these these other computers. I need to go back and New Year's resolution. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it this year. I think I'll put some videos out of me playing some of his uh, his, his other uh, games as well. Anyway, that's that's enough from me. That's enough my raving about one of my heroes and 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 this documentary so go and check out some clips from the documentary show some support if you can if you you know what if you can't throw any coin in the patreon account uh, in the patreon campaign account then it's getting late now actually <laughs> i forgot what i'm saying just to share you know share some of the videos share share the website just 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 spread the word and uh, get word out there and uh, i can't wait till we get some more clips out there and I can't wait to get the, the, movie, the full movie, the full movie out there, and uh, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be great. I've actually watched the first, um, the first thirty minutes. It might be all 30, 40 minutes of the document, a rough cut of it, and uh, it's completely blown away. I won't say anything. Wait till you see. I know, I, I know. Paul is 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 tweaking and re-editing and stuff like that, and uh, it's going to be amazing. Enough from me anyway, so that was my, I mean just as well, I didn't actually do, can you imagine how long the actual text post on my my uh, website would be if I uh, didn't do this video? Anyway, I'm going to shut up. Support indie documentaries, support indie gaming, support indie music as well. Spread the word, spread the love. Take it easy, take care, 